Hello there, this is a video accompanying the Joomla tutorial series developing an MVC component and it's the second video associated with this step of adding an alias and in this step we're going to have a look in more detail about the hello world routing and some of the APIs around the menus. Now if we look at the code, um, a lot of the stuff at this top is going to be fairly straightforward to you. Um, here we're updating the database to create the alias. Now we need to make sure that the alias is um, unique. So what I've done, as you can just see in this PHP admin, is I've set the alias to be ID dash and then uh, whatever ID is the record, ID 4 for record 4, ID 5 for record 5. Um, if you were doing this um, you know, in a proper instance, in a proper um, development, component development, you would probably want to go from the greeting and use the greeting as the basis of the um, alias. But you have to make sure that um, you remove characters which um, are would be not advisable to be output as part of a URL. So whenever you go through and look at the greetings, uh, you might find some greetings which had some dodgy characters in, which you would need to remove. And that's not easy to do as a, a SQL statement. So one thing, um, you know, if you really did want to try that, that's the sort of thing that would work well as an, an install update script. Um, you know, in this step in the tutorial, we covered that. Um, so if you fancy trying that, that's, that's something that would be probably quite instructive to do. The, if we go on down through the code, um, all of this is fairly straightforward. Um, here's our check function, which overrides the check within JTable. And in this case, what we're just doing, we're checking that the alias is set. And if it's not set, we're just going to derive it from the greeting. But we pass it through this little function here to make sure that the characters in the alias are all safe from the point of view of putting them out on a URL. And then category, this is our new category list view, which is really there just so that we can get a whole lot of um, hello world messages plus URLs. And we're just putting out this as a table, which is similar to the table that we have in the back end in the admin. Um, we're just putting this out in the front end. Uh, we've also got the little filter fields, pagination fields here. So, That's defined up here, the filter form. And if we're using um, those filter fields, we have to make sure that we're actually outputting a form in the uh, layout file because they'll rely on that. We can't just put a, a table by itself. And then we just output the items, the greeting, the alias, and the URL, um, setting the URL for each of the records there. And here's our new model. Again, we're extending J model list similar to our backend functionality. So what we need to provide is basically the query that it's going to run. Here's our XML file, which allows us to create a menu item, which is category list. So we can go in here and we can create a new menu item and it will come up with category list here as one of the options. And then this is our definition of the filter fields, the ordering fields that we can order by and the limit box, which really defines this here. So that's all fairly straightforward. And on the front end form, we're just adding an alias. And then we'll cover the Ajax changes in a little while. Now, if you're looking for documentation on the router, there is this page here supporting SEF in your component, is SEF URL, URLs in your component. And having gone through the tutorial step, hopefully this will reinforce some of the concepts in your mind.
Um, it does mention here that within Joomla 3.8, a new router was introduced, and uh, which really does things a different way. It's a bit unfortunate. On this page here, the old router and the new router are a bit mixed up. And it's not clear which belongs to the old router and which belongs to the new router. But basically the parse and the build functions here are the old router, whereas this stuff here is associated with the new router. In terms of documentation on the new router, um, the only thing I've found is this Google Groups forum topic, um, where there's a little kind of guide written by, I think it's the actual author of the uh, code there. I must admit, I tried, did try to develop this step with the new router as well, but actually couldn't get it to work. So maybe it's a possibility for a future step in the tutorial. Okay, so let's look in a bit more detail about the routing that we want to do. As it says up here, this is what we want to come out with. Localhost, my Joomla site. Now in my case, it's localhost, hello world. We want to get it slash slash messages. So this is the menu item that we want to put the um, kind of URLs base them on. And that's this menu item here, which I've got defined. And then we will put our hello world and goodbye world um, aliases under that in terms of what we want the URL to look like. And here's that messages uh, menu item. I've just set it as a category list. I've chosen any old category. It doesn't really matter because we're going to go for rider anyway. Um, and then uh, category ID 29. So when I click on this, this is showing the uh, records for that category, ID 29. Okay, so the first thing we've done is we've created this slash messages menu item. And that's it here. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to start using it. So whenever we output these URLs for the various Hello World records, we have to output them under that um, menu item. And then we need to specify the details which are going to result in us going to the Hello World record there. So we need to call jroot underscore function, and that's in our category file, category list file. Okay, here's our line that outputs, sorry, here's our line that outputs the URL, and here's where we form the URL. So we're basically using the menu item that we're on. Remember what I said that um, jroot, whenever we use it, it will inherit the menu item from the current menu item. And the current menu item is this, which is slash messages. So it will, whenever it creates the URL, it will use that slash messages. And if we look across at slash, slash messages, we find it's item ID 724. So all of these will have item ID 724, as you can see there. And then we're overriding the uh, view with hello world. Well, the view is actually view equals category, so we have to override it with view equals hello world, and we're setting the ID. So that will result in this coming out here. This is what jroot will produce. Um, option com equals hello world, view equals hello world, and ID equals well, 43 in this particular case here, and item 724 item ID 724 associated with the menu item. 
and ordinarily as I showed there that will go through and display the hello world record but if we go back into our global config now we want to switch search engine friendly URLs on and we'll display these messages again now what we want to do is we want to um, replace those query parameters with this segment of the URL, which is basically the alias. So where we're going to do that is in our router.php code. So whenever jroot creates the URL, it will get that ID and view and it will call our build function here and it will pass in the query parameters which will be view equals hello world and ID whatever ID the record is and what we do there is we take the ID and if it's set then we just run a query on our database and we select the alias from the record which has that ID. We set the alias to be the result uh, and set up the segments array to be that alias and return the segments. And that will result in jroot underscore then taking the segment that we pass back and putting it here. So the final thing then is whenever we click on that, this is the URL that we will have sent to the um, sent to the server. So Joomla has to interpret this URL. So this is the domain name, which is constant. It will then go through and it will see the messages section and it will match that to that messages uh, menu item and then it will encounter hello world and it won't know what to do with that so that is what it will pass as a segment to our parse function and what we do is we um, get that segment in we just do another query on our database to select the ID matching that segment or matching that alias from our hello world record and set up that id and the view and return those back and then the router it will find the messages here this messages menu item but it will override our category list view with what we sent back which is basically our hello world view and it will pass it will set up the id as um, whatever we pass back there so in our code we will uh, we will pick off the we will do a get input and we will find that it's a category list view and we will do a get input um, and we will find the id and we will display that id um, the hello world record associated with that ID. So that's going via messages um, to our hello world uh, records. The other mechanism we've got is search here. And whenever we do a search here, this will create, uh, generate an Ajax call, which will go back to our server and it will look for um, Look for records which are in the vicinity of that original one. So if we go back to here, this is our model, get map search results. It will search for hello world records which have latitude and longitude within the bounds of the map. And then what we've got here is we've just set up the URL associated with that record by calling jroot underscore again and we've set up view equals hello world so we're over overriding the view and we're overriding the id so when we get those back we will have a 
Hello World will have a um, view of Hello World. Uh, sorry, Goodbye World record will have a view set to Hello World and the ID set to whatever the Goodbye World record is, which is 41. That will again go into our router and we will then create the um, URL segment associated with that, as you can see down there. So when I click on Goodbye World, it'll come up slash messages slash Goodbye World. Click again, go back to Hello World. So that's uh, all working fine. But the other way that we can get to our Hello World records is by clicking on Hello World here. And then we can do a search here and find the records. Now the issue is that, let me just go back to our JavaScript code. And our JavaScript code is making this AJAX call. And what I'm going to do is in our AJAX call, I'm going to set the URL to be just blank. And I'll save that. And I'll go and I'll press shift as I reload to make sure that it'll bring down the new JavaScript code. Now, when I go and click on search here, and click on goodbye world you see what comes up it comes up with hello world slash goodbye world which is not really what we want if we click on goodbye world and we do a search and then click on hello world it comes up with goodbye world hello world so why is that happening well the reason is that whenever we do our um, Ajax request, if we don't have a URL specified here, it's going to send it back to the same URL. So it's going to send it back to this Hello World URL. Um, the router is then going to try to interpret that Hello World URL and it is going to interpret it and it will find this here will find this menu item. So when we create our um, when we create our URLs here and we pass our view and ID, this will be within the context of this menu item here, which is 416. And so Whenever this URL is created by jroot, it's going to have basically item ID equals 416, which is going to be the hello world. It's going to be, if I click on this, it's going to be this here. And it's going to sit on top, put on top of that hello world menu item it's going to put on our ID so the ID is going to similarly be converted in our router file to an alias and the alias is going to be goodbye world so the problem is that whenever we do the search here if we don't specify the right URL it will pick up the URL or pick up the menu item that it is currently on and it will use that as the basis of creating these URLs here. So what we need to do is we need to, if I just rip, set this back to what it was, this is just the live JavaScript file, as you can see there. This is the live file. I just set that back. And we'll go back in here. We'll go on Hello World search here and as you can see in the tutorial code it's going to messages and what we have done within our tutorial code is we have told ajax that it should go use this url which we've passed down as a parameter 
And in our model code, we've set up that parameter here. Get map params. And one of the params we've sent down is this Ajax URL. And we've got this URL by this calling this function here. And we've written this function here. And what this function here is basically doing is it's working out what is this? What is the ID? What is the item ID of this menu item that we want to um, get this uh, URL based on? So here's our code for getting that Ajax URL. And if we go through this code, we are first of all getting an overall structure for the menu. And if when you whenever you call jfactory get application, you get this site application. If we were calling it in the context of the administrator, we would get um, administrator application. But either way, we get a get menu function. And because we're running this on the site um, application, we get the site menu, which really represents all of the menus and all of the menu items which are on the site. We're working out which is the active menu item. So whenever we uh, uh, click on a URL and the router works out which menu item that refers to, it will set up this set a flag against that menu item to say that this is the active one. And we can then get the active one by this means. Um, and if we then do that and we find that this menu item is actually the right one, well, we don't need to do any more. There are certain circumstances where we, we won't get an active menu item, so we have to cater for those. So if we're already on the right menu item, we can just return. Otherwise, what we can do is we can use this function get items based on this variable here to get the subset of the uh, menu items that we're considering. And here what we're doing is we're really just like a filter parameter. We're filtering on the um, main menu menu items. So we're basically just getting these six here. And if you go on to, uh, this is J menu, and you go down, you get get items here. And this is the API that we're calling. And we'll, what we get returned is a J menu item, or menu item, which has got a whole lot of properties, one of them being the alias. And we go through those six menu items that we have got back and check which one has got an alias of messages. And that is the one that we want. We find its ID and that is the one that we want to put into our J root code. It's just string, uh, PHP string interpolation here. It uh, taking this dollar item ID. Now, um, one of the advantages of using an IDE is you can actually see these things um, more clearly. So what I've done is um, on Eclipse here, and I'm in this code of this function. And here we've got the variables that are within this code. So if we look at menu items, this is the one. This is the uh, one which represents the overall menu structure on the site. This is it here. So as you can see, it's got an active parameter there, which is 416, which is the ID of the active um, uh, menu item. And then it's got 27, array of 27 items. And these are the basically the, the menu items that are on my menus in the site. Other things like language and that sort of stuff, user. This menu item 
uh, we've got the active one there. And if we look at this menu item, we see it's a type J menu item. And it's basically got a number of fields there. Here we've got the alias, ID, and other bits and pieces, menu type, main menu. And you can compare that with the this is abstract menu. This is it here. The properties of the J menu item here. And indeed, they really just reflect um, if you click on a menu item and try to edit it, it's really all these various fields here. And finally, whenever we get our main menu items down here, we get an array of six menu items. And number two is going to be our Hello World menu item. And number four is going to be our messages, alias messages, ID 724. Um, uh, menu type, main menu. So that's basically this one here. And one of the things you might like to try is whenever you've got this function get items, um, you can pass in more than one, just one attribute and value. You can pass in an array of attributes attributes and an array of values and they just match have to match up element by element so the first attribute element has to have a value of the first um array element of the value and that or of the values array and that sort of stuff so you can actually pass in an array here and if you pass in an array and the first element is this of the attribute and the first value element is that and the second attribute element is alias and the second value attribute is messages you can get directly to the right uh, menu item so you might like to try that or you can pass in just an empty array array just open close brackets for both of them and get really all of the items uh, in a big array so that's that. Um, I think that's basically all of the explanation uh, that I wanted to cover. If you wanted to try something new, um, there's something you might like to try here. So there's two things uh, I'm suggesting. One is whenever we look at our router code, we have got um, a database query, both on the parse and within the build. And really database queries, if you can avoid them, um, it's best to. If we look, for example, at our uh, Joomla test site, which was covered in the first video. Um, if we look at this here, we have got two slash archive module. So we've got a combination of the ID and the alias that is being passed in. So one thing that you can do is rather than set an ID of the um, an ID just with the record ID. What you can do is you can set an ID of the record ID colon record alias, and you will see this a number of times in Joomla and Joomla Core. Um, it's using within the segment of the URL. It's using a combination of the record ID and the record alias and the big advantage of that is that you don't need to then do a database lookup because what you do within your code um, 
is whenever you're passing in like here no sorry not the other one here we are whenever we're in this position we've already got a query here in our code so it's very easy just to get the alias out as well and then we can put in here the results of id being id colon alias and that means whenever we're in our router um, we don't have to do the lookup to get the alias and similarly if we pass the whole thing through in the same way as this pass in id colon alias within our parse code we will get the id and the alias as the segment and we don't need to do a lookup to get the id and we can just pass the id by you know interpreting and splitting up the um, url segment that we've got so that can make our code run a fair bit faster because we can avoid all of these queries so that's the first thing you might like to try and the second thing is um or oh, i should say that whenever you're not working in um sef mode you're passing through this id here but the that id will still work because whenever in your code you do something like this dollar input get id one and one is just the default um, you know, you start your code to work out which ID you're referring to. Uh, if you've got something like this, when you request it's an int, Joomla will just return you this bit here. So even though the ID has got characters in it, um, whenever you call it, it will just pick off the record ID bit and will ignore that bit. Um, so that's quite nice. So the fact that you pass in an ID like this will mean that it will still work. The second thing to uh, you could do is instead of hello world messages being of the form slash messages, where we've got that, you could put them out as slash message, where slash message is a hidden menu item. So what I've got here is a another menu item here and you can see it's hidden and it's got a view of just the hello world rather than a category list and the fact that it's hidden is just set by this display and menu parameter under the link type so what I've done is I've just picked any old message at random um, as the default and I've set it as this view. So the link will be option equals com hello world, view equals hello world, and ID equals four. So what I'm suggesting is that you might like to try this. Instead of this here, try it with this slash message. Now, in my case, it's got ID 800 over here u equals hello world id equals four so whenever i'm outputting a url i'll want to output the id and override the id and here's this 43 colon hello world structure rather than just id equals 43 um, so view equals hello world id 43 colon hello world so i'll just show you that actually working i'll click on that and it's a fairly challenging little exercise but it will help to get to uh, a really good working knowledge of the router and uh, some of these things associated with routing. Now, if we click on messages, it comes up with here we have message 
and then the ID of the record, colon, and then the alias. You can see it better here. ID is 43, and the alias is hello world, and it's sitting on the slash message. And then when I search here, you can see the same sort of thing. And I can go in via hello world. Click on those and it comes again, if you look down the bottom left there, comes up with based on the message. So the sort of thing you need to do is uh, to get that working, you need to create that hidden menu item. And then when you create the URLs with JRoot, and there's two places you will, we do that. First of all, in the category list view, and secondly, in the Ajax response, we need to pass in the item ID of this hidden menu item, this message one, which obviously means you need to find that item ID first. And what I did was uh, write a little function message item ID and put it into a helper file and then use that. And then you need to change those JRoot calls. And um, I'll show you an idea of what I did. Here's our category list view. Here is where I'm outputting the URL and instead of um, this bit here setting the url here what i've done is i've set up the url as kind of another property of this row and i've set it back in the view so for each of the records that i've got by calling get items I've set the item URL and I've just created another function in the model to give me the URL of that item. And then if I go to the model, what I'm doing is for that ID, um, I'm getting the message item ID. And then when I create that uh, URL using JRoot, and passing in that item ID. And there's the other little bit about putting in the ID colon alias. Again, this is just PHP string interpol interpolation there. And the other place I need to do it is in my Ajax, get map search results. Again, I'm getting the item ID from my little helper function and then just by putting that item ID and again putting the results ID colon results alias and if you try that then you should be able to get something like this structure here and then if we go to our um, site hello world components com hello world and we look at our router.php you can see that all of that um, query stuff SQL query stuff is commented out and we don't need to do any queries at all okay so hopefully that will be useful uh, the only other thing i want to mention was uh, how do you decide upon a url structure well first of all you've got to recognize that it's going to be based on your menu structure because that's the way that Joomla works so um, you have to fit in with what your menus are going to be so that maybe um, has a bearing upon what your menu structure will be You've got to obviously make it sensible for your viewers going from the general to the specific. For example, mountains, Alps, Eiger. Um, you've got to avoid ambiguity as much as possible. And something to be aware of is that category alias aliases don't have to be unique by default. They just have to be unique at the 
same level and perform and think about the uh, queries that you're doing on the database and something you'll hopefully find uh, useful is to create a little table like that which shows you where you're setting these things what you're overriding them with and what you're expecting to be in the SEF URL and that will help you with your design and implementation of your router build and parse functions which will be mapping between these two sorts of um, uh, structures here. Okay, that's about it for now. Hopefully you find that useful and thanks very much for watching. Bye.